All right, guys, I think we got quite a bit to cover here on this one. This is the Zero West H1-P3708. So big thanks to Off Duty. His username on our private Discord is Off Duty. His actual name is Gary. So big thanks to Gary for allowing me to check this out and share it with you guys. So before we get too bogged down with the details, let's take a quick look at the watch and cover the size because I know a lot of people... They want that information right away. So let's just do that. So we are looking at a 44 millimeter automatic watch, a 54 millimeter lug to lug. You can see it's about 14 and a half millimeter thick. There is a sapphire, flat sapphire display on the back. It's not displaying the movement and we'll cover that. And then we have a domed, I believe double domed, but it's very slight crystal on the top that is sapphire with AR coating on the underside. You have 22 millimeter lug width here, seven and a half millimeter oversized screw down crown, and in this configuration it weighs in at 135 gram. It's using the automatic ETA 2824 movement and has a hundred meter water resist. That's kind of the basic information, right? So let's move on to some details. Um, there is loom on this. It's going to have X1 loom, so the loom is going to be good. We'll show that at the very towards the very end of the video. And then you can see you have a very heavily aviation type theme on this, and that's intentional, obviously. One main thing that we're going to notice right on the back here is that sapphire is covering some aluminum, or I guess this is from over the pond, so aluminum, um, that is recasted. And if you go to the website, I'll put a link in the description to Zero West website. They actually go into pretty good detail about where it was recovered and what they had to do to harvest it and then melt it down and recast it and make these discs to include with every watch. So this is aluminum or aluminum casted from a salvaged, P3708 that crashed on the Foulness Islands Island. All that stuff is on the website. I'm, I know I'm going to mess some of it up, guys. But and that was from the Rolls Royce engine that was the Merlin Rolls Royce engine that was in the hurricane. And um, yeah, so that's actually in the watch. And they're only making a hundred of these. So. Pretty rare watch, and it has a really cool story to it, for sure. You can see interesting case shape. This is actually hollowed out all the way through. So you can, like, see all the way through there. You probably, you know, you got to keep that clean and everything. And interesting case shape, for sure. And then that crown is the shape of, actually, it's right here. It's the shape of the trigger mechanism, I believe, that was in the flight controls of the aircraft. Of the hurricane so you can see the really nice broad handset there and you have again the aviation like the slip angle I guess the left right turn and slip angle and all that good stuff all that information is kind of laid out on the dial to just all tie into there that's the latitude and longitude of that island where the the uh, aircraft material was recovered from and then you have that like I said the broad handset and you have that red Second hand kind of sweeping there. Again, kind of like almost like a radar aviation type theme. And then you have that really oversized flat disc on top of that kind of concealing the whole post. And it just kind of blends into that matte black dial. Now the watch comes on this rubber strap. But Gary also bought these extra straps. So he has the uh, brown. I'll mix and match here. He has the brown. He has the green. You can see he's actually worn the green. These are really nice leather straps. And then embedded down in there, sandwiched, is this is actually legitimate World War II canvas in the brown one and the green one. Now the red with the black, that's, you know, all newer material. So, but that's actually kind of cool that they were able to do that too. Which, I, you know, that is going to be a little easier to harvest, that material, you know, because of like surplus and everything like that. It's still probably getting a little more difficult if it's actually legitimately from World War II, but still easier to do than harvesting that material from the uh, wrecked 
aircraft. That's going to be extremely difficult. All right, let's pop this on wrist. Now, price on these, they're a little hefty, as you can imagine, because of all the detail and efforts that took place to manufacture this watch, you know, in completing the whole story, is I think it's 2,495 pounds converted to U.S. would be about $3,300, roughly. So here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's perfectly fine on the rubber, but I mean, I don't know how much these leather straps are, but yeah, that I think that really takes it up a notch. That's going to be a really nice transition to go to these nice leather straps. You can see, like I said, he was wearing the green one for sure. Um, I believe it's a no date. Yeah, no date. So like you're basically just going to unscrew this crown. The, the crown on this thing is crazy tight. I mean, there is like no movement on that thing at all. So you can wind it. You can pop it out. I, yeah, I believe there's a go state position. Yeah, you can actually feel it. So meaning that there's a phantom date. They didn't remove it from it. Man, I cannot believe how tough, tough and sturdy that crown system is. So yeah, you can adjust the time pretty easy. Set it whatever you need it to be. Go ahead and that back in that'll get the second hand going again and then screw that crown down and keep that 100 meter water depth rating on this watch comes with some other things here this is the little hologram there this is the warranty and this is actually serial number 59 of 100 so pretty cool so it comes in this really it's like a legitimate pelican case and like I said, it does come with this guy here, which is the uh, backstory, recovered, recast, reinvented sort of thing. It has the whole story there, which is also going to be in the uh, just the website link that I'll provide. All that information is there, too. I don't need to just read from the manual and everything. I just took my measurements, took my notes, shared them with you guys. Gary also sent over this guy here a little coaster that they must have included. And then there's another little postcard here as well from Zero West. I expect we're going to see a lot of cool watches coming up from the brand. Um, and if they go through the same detail and depth of, and, you know, the backstory with the product, you know, you can do it with racing, obviously, and then um, aircraft. And I mean, it, the, the possibilities are endless, really. So I think it's a very fun, cool project that they are taking on. And I look forward to seeing future ones for sure. Let's kill the lights and check the loom on this. For size reference, I just happen to have my Longines uh, Big Eye. So if you guys wanted to just, I know it's not a, a very good reference because not everybody has one of these, but I just happen to have it here. So just for size reference. All right, let's kill the lights. Check the loom. Yep, there we go. Decent enough loom. You even have a little bit on the L and the R. That's a little bit lighter, but that's a good thing, I think. Um, the rest of it's reserved for the hour minute. And then the almost like an instrument cluster sort of thing. But they are indices, I suppose. So you have orientation. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next vid.